Well, a great restaurant is a restaurant that fires on all cylinders. It's one that you feel um, comfortable and privileged and even a little bit pampered to sit in. Um, you know, pampered by the way everything around you looks, pampered by um, uh, the way the servers are dealing with you. It's a restaurant that has tr tr terrific service, um, but that means service that is, um, is, is calibrated uh, well to the environment, that is as and no more stilted than the environment calls for, or as and no more informal than the environment calls for, that is certainly uh, attentive, but without being unduly intrusive and obsequious. So then there's that whole element. And then, you know, first and foremost, a restaurant that gives you food you want to eat, um, food that is um, distinguished in its genre, um, food that makes sense, again, in terms of the menu's entirety, in terms of the environment, in terms of the service. So it's a restaurant that kind of knows what it is, fires on all cylinders, and sends you out the door three hours later or two hours later, or it could be 90 minutes later if it's a momofuku sambar, um, that sends you out the door feeling utterly content and feeling like um, its promises were kept. Well, I mean, that too can be a, a great, I mean, you, you can have just, you know, one perfect uh, boudin blanc sausage, and that can be, um, is that a dish? Well, sure, you know. Um, it's, it's the same, it, 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 it again boils down to something that does exactly what it means to do, um, and that delivers exactly what it promises in its written description and in its kind of visual form as you look at it. Well, in technical ways, it does. Um, I mean, in, in terms of, um, uh, I, I can't, there are not many nights where I can just go to whatever restaurant I want to because I have a schedule to keep and a list of new restaurants to try and a list of restaurants that are going to be reviewed that I have to visit, you know, a second and third or, you know, sometimes fourth or even fifth time. Um, so in that sense yeah i just i just don't eat like a normal person i don't i don't just kind of um in the morning or at 4 p.m say what do i feel like for dinner tonight i mean i sometimes know four weeks in advance exactly where i'm going to be on february 28th um does it get in the way of just eating in terms of sitting there and just enjoying a piece of food without thinking about it to death no no i mean eating is such a primal visceral thing that I, I think you'd have to get very, very jaded not to be able to just bite into a juicy hamburger, you know, and just kind of hum all over without wondering exactly what composition of ground beef is in there, you know? The Italian food in New York is extremely good. Um, it is, um, it's different in a, in, in, in a lot of ways. Um, uh, if you if you go to most most um, good Italian restaurants in Rome or in most parts of Italy, the approach is, is much simpler than it is here. Um, one of the things that invariably happens uh, when you're a restaurant serving an ethnic cuisine in a city where rents are as high as New York and where ambitions are as large and, and vanity as keen as it is in New York is, is, is you start fussing with the food a lot. Um, and so... Uh, I think inevitably and predictably, a lot of the, the finest and most ambitious Italian restaurants here do a much more, um, you know, articulated, embellished, elaborate version of Italian cooking than some of your best restaurants in Rome do. Um, Rome being actually a good example, but that's true of other areas of Italy as well. Um, taking that out of the equation and taking out of the equation the fact that I don't think we have the same, uh, we still, even in this day and age don't have quite the same kind of farm to table or, or, or shore to table uh, systems in place as they do in, 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 in certain European countries, including Italy. Um, beyond all that, the Italian food here is, is, I think, quite, quite good. I can't do that either. Um, I, again, too many of them. There's just too many. I mean, there are a lot of, uh, of very good ones. Um, I mean, if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're in a kind of um, laid back, don't want a lot of fuss, but want something that feels warm and homey mood. Um, there are a lot of options, including Aldi La out in Park Slope of Brooklyn, Svolia on the Upper East Side. But everything has an asterisk. I mean, you talk about those two places. 
um, both of which I gave two stars to. And Aldi La doesn't take reservations, and Svolia, it's almost impossible to get a reservation between 6 and 9 p.m. So, you know, when you start dealing with like short lists, everything kind of as an asterisk or a qualification. If you're talking about very fancy Italian, or not even very fancy, but kind of a, a price point above those places, there are wonderful options, including, you know, Babbo and A Voce and um, and for a very Frenchified kind of quasi-Italian Fiamma down in Tribeca, um, Alto on the east side. I mean, there are, there are a lot of options, and it's hard to single any one out as the perfect one. Mm -hmm.